In this video, there's a bar, um, and a force is applied to this bar. It's starting stationary. A force is applied, and it, the bar slides along A and, uh, A and B along the surfaces and ends up vertical. And we are asked to find what is the final angular velocity of uh, the bar, given force F. So we first have to analyze this um, problem. Uh, and we're going to define two states, the initial state and the final state. So the initial state, which we're going to call state 1, is going to be the state when the bar is slanted. Okay, so the bar is slanted, um, and it has an angle theta with the um, horizontal. And um, at this point, we can see that... Um, the ICZV of the bar is located um, over here. And this is because we have um, a, a velocity um, along the wall upwards over here when it starts moving and then uh, to the right here when this starts moving. This is right after it starts moving, that's the ICZV. Okay, so um, we can uh, get some dimensions on this ICZV. So it's when we start off, we have um, this length being 1.5 meters and this angle theta being 30 degrees. So this angle is also theta, which is equal to 30 degrees. So we can get the vertical distance as being 3 over 4 meters and the top distance 3 root 3 over 4 meters. Okay, so this is essentially the initial geometry. It starts off um, slanted, so we have the x, the y, and x components. Um, so initially, at state in state 1, we have um, zero kinetic energy, so T1 is equal to zero because nothing is moving, um, and we have some potential energy, V1. Okay, so potential energy we're going to define as our datum as starting from B. Okay, so this is our datum, and um, this is going to be H, okay, the height off of here, so this is the datum. And um, in this case, um, G will be halfway down. So again, G will be over here. Um, and we need to find that height. Um, so again, with our angle, we use um, the sine and we find this height over here times half of this length. So V1 will be equal to uh, M G H1 which is equal to um, 30 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared and then times H1 which is going to be um, 3 over 4 times sine of 30 degrees and so V1 is equal to um, 110.36 joules. Okay, so now we're done with state one. We found all the energies in state one. Now we can move to the state two, which is the final state. Okay, so this is when the bar is perfectly vertical. All right. And when the bar is perfectly vertical, there's going to be the following velocities. So velocity at the bottom, like so, and velocity over here, like so. Okay. But since this can't detach from the bottom, we're going to have the ICZV being up here on the top. Okay. So this, and then G is going to be halfway. So this is G. Okay, and so this height is going to be 1.5 meters, um, and 
we're going to have an omega in this case. Okay, so an omega rolling everything that way. Okay, so in this case, we're going to have some kinetic energy. Our kinetic energy will not be zero. So T2 is going to be equal to, there's two terms, one half m v g squared plus one half i g omega squared. Okay, now we said there's going to be an omega because it's rotating, um, and um, since it's pinned over here, it's acting pinned at um, A. So this is A, and this is B, this is A, and this is B. Um, it's acting as if it's pinned at A. Um, we can, um, we don't know omega, we're trying to solve for omega, um, but we, um, we can relate omega, we can relate Vg to omega. Um, so Vg is just equal to m, or v, one half m times Vg squared. Vg is going to be equal to um, this distance. Um, so I'm going to draw Vg in purple. Um, so it's going to go to the right that way. Remember, omega cross r is v. Um, in this case, since they're perpendicular, then the perpendicular r and um, v, um, then we're going to have um, it going to the left, and it's just going to be the direct multiplication of the two. So we have um, omega, which we don't know, we're still leaving as an unknown, uh, times um, three quarters. And this is all squared. Okay, and three quarters is going to be um, half of this length, right? This is 1.5, three quarters is just half of that length over there. Plus one half times Ig. Now we need to calculate Ig. Ig is going to be 1 12th ml squared. Okay, so m and then l being the length of the bar, so l squared. And then we're going to multiply it by omega, which we don't know. Okay, so if we plug in values into this equation, uh, we get the following. Uh, 1 12th times 30 kilograms times omega 3 over 4 meters squared plus 1 half times 1 12th times 30 kilograms times 1.5 meters squared omega squared. And we can solve for T2 and we can find that T2 is going to be equal to 11.25 omega squared. So we have T2 in terms of omega which is good because that's what we're trying to solve for. Okay. Um, now we need to find the potential energy in state two. So V2, V2 is just going to be equal to MGH2, um, and M is 30 kilograms, G is 9.81 meters per second squared, and H2 is just going to be equal to half of the length again, so three quarters uh, meters. Um, or 0 0.75 meters, um, and when we multiply everything, we get 220.73 joules. So now we have the kinetic and potential energy of both states, but in this question, we are also applying a force. And when we apply a force to a system, we're adding work into... Um, the system, so we're adding energy. So balancing these two states doesn't give us any information because we've added energy to the system, so we have to account for that work. So um, this work is the work due to the force, and the work due to a constant force is just the force times the distance that um, the, the location where the force has been applied has traveled. Um, so we can just directly multiply those. So work due to force um, 
we have um, u that goes from 1 to 2, so from state 1 to 2, is going to be equal to the work due to the force, which is just the force times the distance. Okay, in this case, the force is 650 newtons, and the distance is just that x distance this thing has traveled, right? So it goes from here to the vertical position, or in the diagram, this distance here. So I'll write, I'll draw that in over here. So this is um, d. Okay, so that distance we already calculated is 3 root 3 over 4. So we have 3 root 3 over 4 meters, which is equal to, um, well, that's just a number um, that we plug into the final equation. So now we have all of the components of the energy of the system that, um, and we can add them up and equate them to each other and solve for omega because everything depends on omega, okay, or is a constant. So we have state one, so T1 plus V1 uh, plus the work to go from one to two. It's gonna be equal to um, T2 plus V2, okay? And this work, we're adding it on this side because it's work we're adding to the system to get to state two. And since this is positive, we're adding work on this side. Okay, so watch for those for the sign convention. Um, and um, we can plug everything in, so we get zero plus 110.4 um, joules plus um, 650 newtons times uh, three root three over four meters is equal to 11.25 omega squared uh, plus 220.7 joules, okay? Um, and when we solve this equation, it's a quadratic equation because omega is squared. We can solve for it and get that omega is equal to uh, 8.1 radians per second. And that is the final answer for this problem.